Hello, everyone, it's me, and welcome again to another Kent seminar. Continuing with our transportation and climate change series, today we have a talk from Professor Francesco Canestrari. Professor Canestrari is a full professor at the Università Politecnica delle Marche in Italy, where he has been a professor since 1995. He earned his master's degree from the same university in 1992. He is an expert on road materials and pavement engineering with research activity focused on the characterization of sustainable and innovative pavement materials, pavement maintenance and management. Professor Canestrari has been recognized by having many publications and awards, as well as being involved in projects funded by public and private agencies. It's our pleasure to have Professor Canestari today to talk about sustainable asphalt mixtures. So let's give him a round of applause. Thank you for your introduction. And let's move to the first slide of my presentation. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Perfect. Well, let's start. First of all, uh, I would like to thank the Illinois Center for Transportation for inviting me as a speaker of the Kent Seminar Series. It's really an honor for me. The title of my presentation is Examining the World Recycled Asphalt Quality, a paradigmatic seven-year case study. Here is the outline of my presentation after the introduction related to some general information. I will describe the full-scale trial section and the experimental findings collected in seven years in terms of uh, conventional mechanical testing, simplified viscoelastic continuum damage performance analysis, interlayer shear bonding, FWD and TSD monitoring, chemical evaluation of recovered uh, polymer modified binders, environmental assessment, and finally, uh, I will summarize the main outcome, outcomes in uh, the conclusions. Just to, to give you an idea where I work, in this slide we can see that the Polytechnic University of Marche is located in the city of Ancona on the eastern coast of central Italy. Uh, my research group is composed of seven faculty staff members two postdocs and seven PhD students, currently, of course. All the researchers, researchers are involved in pavement engineering topics. The title of my presentation was inspired by one of my favorite books, Zen and the Art of the Motorcycle Maintenance. There are several reasons that motivated my choice. First, the links with the pavement engineering, in fact, Zen and the Art of the Motorcycle Maintenance is a book on the road talking about a summer trip and the term maintenance is the, in the title is very common in pavement engineering. Moreover, uh, much of the book focuses on a rather surprising topic, the metaphysics of quality, talking about objective versus subjective way of thinking. It is uh, very interesting to note how, in this book, the author, Robert Piercig, suggests that when talking about quality, we should think beyond measurable parameters. Finally, um, the case study is paradigmatic in the sense of shared examples according to the meaning given by Thomas Kuhn in his book, The Structure of Scientific Revolutions. Given this premise, it is well known that the transportation sector is responsible today for most of the greenhouse gases emissions and the climate change. So we can ask if road pavements can make the difference and the answer would be found in sustainable paving mixtures such as warm mix asphalt technologies. Everybody knows that warm mix asphalt technology allows uh, the production and compaction of asphalt mixtures at lower temperatures than conventional hot mix asphalt. The typical temperature reduction is in the range from minus 20 to minus 60 degrees C compared to hot mix asphalt. 
And therefore, the possible advantages of warming asphalt technology consist in reduction uh, of production temperatures and energy savings, lower pollutant uh, emissions and improved uh, working conditions, longer hauling distances and extended working time for paving operations and faster opening to traffic. And from the point of view of the mixture, uh, we could also have a lower binder aging and the possibility to add a higher amount of wrap. However, uh, to support large scale application of warm mix asphalt, we still have limited data concerning the long-term field performance, especially when this technology is used in combination with the polymer modified binders. This point is crucial for us in Italy because the Italian motorway network um, is, um, is interested uh, by very high heavy traffic that requires the use of polymer modified bitumens for rehabilitation and maintenance, maintenance activities. Moreover, we have a very narrow territory and densely populated where the asphalt plants are often located near the urban areas. Based on this background, the road agencies ask for solutions to reduce emissions and incorporate equal or even higher amount of RAP without penalizing performance. This is the starting point of the research activities that I'm going to present based on a seven year research program developed in cooperation with the Italian Motorways uh, Society. At the beginning, we carried out laboratory experimental tests to select the best additive to be used in the real scale application. It is well known that uh, the warm mix asphalt technology can use three types of additives, the chemical additives, organic additives, uh, such as paraffinic um, WAP or WOXIS, and water containing additives such as zeolite. Another starting point was the temperature reduction that was fixed equal to minus uh, 40 degrees C to obtain the benefits in terms of pollu pollution reduction uh, uh, at the asphalt plant and not only. As a consequence, uh, the mixing and compaction temperature for warm mi mixtures containing polymer modified uh, binders were assumed equal to 130 and 120 degrees C respectively. At the end of the preliminary laboratory investigation, the selected warm mix asphalt technology was the one based on the use of the chemical additives, because this type of additive was able to ensure good performance both for dense graded and open graded asphalt mixtures, at least in the laboratory. The next step was the construction of the trial section along the motorway A1 in 2016. The project involved the full depth reconstruction of the pavement after milling all existing asphalt layers for a total length of 800 meters. As shown in the figure, a reference section was built with hot recycled mixtures and compared with three sections built with different types of warm mix asphalt chemical additives. All sections, coded as WC2, WC1, WC3, and HMA, are characterized by the same conditions in terms of payment structure, subgrade, traffic, and weather conditions. The mixtures of all test sections were produced considering the mix design usually adopted for hot recycled mixtures. The open graded mixtures contain 15% wrap, the dense graded binder mixtures contain 25% uh, wrap, and the dense graded base mixtures contains 30% rock. In all cases, both the virgin bitumen and the bitumen from wrap are SBS polymer modified with 3.8% SPS polymer by binder weight. All, all hot mixtures were produced at 170 and compacted at 160 degrees C, whereas all warm mixtures were produced at 130 and compacted at 120 uh, degrees C. The warm chemical additives employed are three commercially available products and their dosage 
uh, was chosen um, according to the producer's recommendations. During the construction of the trial section, the loose mixtures produced at the asphalt plant were taken and immediately compacted in the laboratory with the target number of gyrations. Then conventional mechanical testing in terms of indirect tensile stiffness modules and indirect, indirect tensile fatigue tests were carried out according to European standards on both uh, laboratory compacted specimens and in situ cores immediately after the construction of the trial section in 2016, and also three years later in 2019. When comparing the indirect tensile stiffness modules of laboratory specimens and cores taken in 2016, looking at the first and second set of bars of the histogram, we can see that warm and hot mixtures show similar values. Whereas uh, when considering cores taken in 2019, we observe higher variability for hot mix asphalt specimens and remarkable stiffness modules increase, likely due to more severe aging effect in the case of hot mixtures compared to the warm mixtures. In this slide, there are the results in terms of resistance to cyclic loading. In general, we can see that warm mixtures showed higher resistance to cyclic loading than hot mixtures. More in detail, on the left, there's the comparison between the fatigue resistance of hot and warm mixtures based on laboratory specimens and in situ cores taken in 2016. On the right, we have the same comparison obtained by adding the, the results of the in situ cores in 2019, where we can see that after more than three years in service, the fatigue behavior and the ranking of both mixtures remains basically uh, the same. We adopted also uh, the simplified viscoelastic continuum, continuum damage analysis to compare the performance of hot and uh, warm mixtures. Based on the elastic viscoelastic correspondence principle and on the validity of the continuum damage theory, a single char characteristic curve shown on the left can be found to represent uh, the pseudo stiffness C as a function of the damage parameter S. This curve represents the reduction in material integrity as damage grows, regardless of the applied load con loading conditions and temperature. Once obtained the pseudo stiffness curve, a pseudo energy based failure criterion is adopted to calculate the param parameter dr representative of the material toughness. The higher the dr parameter, the higher the material toughness. Then all the experimental results are summarized in a synthetic index named SAP, representative of the apparent damage capacity that takes into account the dynamic modules fatigue damage evolution and the failure criterion results. The higher the sub, the better the fatigue performance. Then we applied the simplified viscoelastic continuum, continuum damage analysis for the evaluation of performance based on in situ cores taken in 2022 from the trial section. First, we carried out the laboratory test with the asphalt mixture performance tester. Then uh, we analyzed the experimental data with the FlexMap tool to obtain the intrinsic properties of the materials. And finally, we predicted the service life of the pavement by using the FlexPave software. In this case, we compared the performance of hot mixtures with the performance of warm mixtures prepared only with the C1 chemical additive. To this purpose, uh, three cores uh, with a diameter of 150 millimeters were extracted from the trial section for each type of mixture. Then for both binder and base layers, laboratory horizontal coring was carried out to obtain small size specimens with a diameter of 38 millimeters and a height of 110 millimeters. Once obtained the small size specimens, first we 
uh, perform the, the dynamic models test according to ASHTO standards to obtain the storage models in our secures with the 2S2P 1D model. Then the small size specimens were also used for cyclic fatigue tests according to ASHTO standards to obtain the pseudo stiffness curves as a function of the damage parameter S. Uh, in this slide, uh, we have the summary of the experimental results obtained with the FlexMath, expressed in terms of pseudo stiffness curve, DR parameter, and synthetic uh, index sub. Based on sub values on the right, we can observe better fatigue performance for warm mixtures, both in the case of binder and base mixtures, traduced by higher values for the sub parameter. This result can be due to the lower wrap oxidation in the case of warm mixtures. Then, based on the damage contours obtained after the flex pave analysis, we can see a limited top-down cracking due to thermal effects in both sections, whereas the bottom-up cracking is higher in the HMA section, meaning that the warm mixtures have better performance than the hot ones. Also in terms of predicted pavement cracking, the results in this slide show very limited damage due to high modus base. However, in any case, um, the damage is lower in the warm section independently if we consider only the fatigue or also the thermal effect. Another fundamental aspect investigated in the seven-year case study was the interlayer shear bond. It is well known that pavements are multi-layered structures and the overall performance under traffic loading highly depends on the interlayer bonding properties that can be modeled with two opposite conditions. On one side, we have the full additions response, and on the other side, there's the perfectly smooth response. Of course, the real behavior of interfaces is intermediate and evolutive under traffic loading. For this reason, the higher the interface shear strength, the better the payment performance. That's why it's of primary importance to investigate if the lower compaction temperature of warm mixtures can lead to lower interlayer bonding. The quasi-static tests, such as Leutner and the Astra test shown in this slide, were used for the characterization of the interlayer bonding in terms of interlayer shear strength. The tests were carried out on in situ cores taken from three field trials, including the one described in this presentation. To this purpose, um, different types of interfaces were considered having the possibility to investigate the influence of several variables such as different types of chemical additives that co of the pavement. The influence of each variable was evaluated by means of a novel statistical analysis with a confidence level of 95%. In this slide, uh, we can see the summary of the interlayer shear strength results related to hot and warm laydown of the asphalt layers during the construction activities. Whatever the interface considered, there isn't a clear trend because in most cases, the differences between HMA and warm mix asphalt are not statistically significant. Therefore, it can be concluded that the reduced laydown temperature of warm mixtures does not penalize the interlayer bonding of pavement interfaces. Another important task of the case study is related to the non-destructive testing in terms of folding weight deflectometer and traffic speed deflectometer monitoring of the trial section. The FWD testing program included the two campaigns, one in 2016 and one in 2019. And concurrently to the FWD tests, the ground penetrating radar uh, was used to evaluate the layer thicknesses. 
The testing program included, in, included also indirect tensile stiffness modulus tests carried out for each section, both in 2016 and 2019, whose results were discussed in previous slides. The representative deflection basins obtained for all sections in 2016 and 2019 are shown in this slide. The figure on the left shows that in 2016, the HMA test field exhibited the lowest deflections, which are consistent with the slightly higher indirect tensile stiffness modules emerged during uh, the laboratory tests for the binder layer tools. The lower deflections uh, were probably caused by the higher oxidation undergone during mixing and compaction. The results obtained for warm mixtures in 2016 are also consistent with the ITSM of the binder layer cores. The deflection at 1,500 millimeters from the loading plate is comparable for all test fields, both in 2016 and 2019, and remains almost unchanged over time, indicating a limited influence of the lower layers on the comparison between the test fields. Therefore, the general decrease in the deflections are, and the reduced variability between the test fields observed in 2019 can be mainly attributed to the changes of the asphalt layer properties. The back calculation was then carried out with the Elmond 6, 6 software. The pavement was modeled as a three layer structure, and the first layer was representative of all the asphalt layers according to the technical specification of the Italian motorways. Obviously, uh, the results of the bay calculation were affected by this assumption because the stiffness of the open graded friction course was certainly lower than that of the dense graded binder and base layers. The results of the bay calculation are summarized in this, in this table. For each test section, the table shows the stiffness moduli of, moduli of the asphalt layer, the sub-base, and the sub -layer. The last column of the table indicates the temperature of the asphalt layer. We can observe that there is a difference of more than 4 degrees C between the 2016 and 2019 temperatures. For this reason, it was necessary to refer all the asphalt layer moduli to the same temperature equal to to uh, 20 degrees C. This correction was made by considering the, the complex modulus isochronal curve at 20 Hertz that corresponds to a typical FWD load frequency response. Looking at the graph on the right, we can observe that in 2016, the hot section exhibited the highest modulus while the WC2 section exhibited the lowest modulus. Whereas in 2019, all warm mixtures exhibited um, a similar modulus in line with uh, very similar to the ITSM results, whereas the modulus of the hot section was lower. To uh, understand these results, to understand the meaning of these results, the variation of the indirect tensile stiffness modulus and the back calculated modulus must be analyzed together. The more interesting result is related to the hot section that exhibited an increase in the indirect tensile stiffness modulus and a decrease in the back calculated modulus. This inconsistency can be explained by considering that back calculated results are related to the layer performance. In fact, if the layer is affected by a progressive damage, the back calculation leads to decreasing back calculated modulus values over time. Therefore, it can be, it can be deduced that uh, HMA likely suffered the most severe aging in the field, which made the pavement more prone to fracture and damage because uh, we observed at the same time an increase in the indirect tensile stiffness modulus over time. And this uh, uh, increase in the stiffness can be attributable to the in-service aging of the asphalt mixture. 
Overall, the results obtained indicate that the warm recycled mixtures can ensure higher performance and longer service life than hot recycled mixtures. The pavement bearing capacity has been also monitored by means uh, traffic speed deflectometer since 2022. Only preliminary results are available at the moment, of course, and the traffic speed deflectometer allows the measure of the surface deflections induced by 100 kN trailer axle, thanks to a set of laser Doppler sensors installed on the support beam. In this slide, we have the comparison between the deflection basins obtained for the warm, warm C1 section and the deflection basins obtained for the hot mix asphalt section. Even though uh, these results are still preliminary, it can be observed that there aren't big differences between the two sections, and the future TSD testing could confirm the goodness of the worm technology in comparison with the traditional hot one. Besides the mechanical characterization, we adopted also another approach to evaluate the long-term effects of warm mix asphalt technology or real pavement. Uh, this approach was based on the chemical evaluation of different properties of polymer modified bitumens recovered from different hot and warm recycled mixtures in service for more than five years, taken from the case study trial section. The binder was recovered from open graded and dense graded mixtures containing different percentages of reclaimed asphalt pavement. Specifically, the binder was recovered from hot and warm mixtures prepared with the chemical add additive C1 taken from in situ course in 2000 2022. After the binder extraction, the solvent was removed with the rotor vapor equipment as shown in the, in the figure. Then the methodology used for the chemical evaluation of the recovered polymer modified binder is based on the use of the equipment listed in this slide, such as nuclear magnetic resonance, differential scanning calorimetry, confocal laser scanning microscopy and atomic force microscopy, digital microscopy light polarized, and moreover, we included also frequencies with tests to link or to try to link rheological behavior with the chemical properties of recovered binders. The nuclear magnetic resonance uh, was used to estimate the relax relaxation time representative of the decay of a magnetic field induced in the binder of specimen. The rel relaxation time is linked to the bitumen bitumen oxidation. The higher the relaxation time, the higher the bitumen oxidation. Looking at the results of both open graded and dense graded mixtures, it's clear that the recovered binders from warm mixtures are less oxide, oxidized because their relaxation time is higher. This result is more evident for the polymer modified binders recovered from the dense graded mixtures with respect to the bitumens from open graded mixtures, where the difference is reduced. This is because the wearing course is affected during its service life by the action of severe external agents. The differential scanning calorimetry method is used to measure the glass transition temperature, Tg, of the asphalt beams. Also, this parameter is correlated to the bitumen aging and oxidation. The higher the glass transition temperature, the higher the oxidation. Looking at the results in the pictures, we can see that for both dense graded and open graded mixtures, there are two glasses two glass transition temperatures. The lower is related to the virgin bitumen added to the mixtures, whereas the higher is linked to the bitumen coming from the reclaimed asphalt. The higher values of the um, glass transition temperature obtained for binders recovered from dense graded hot mixtures imply higher oxidation.
The TG values for hot and warm hot open graded mixtures are similar because in this case, the oxidation is mainly due to the in-service long-term aging due to the weather effect. The confocal laser scanning microscopy and atomic force microscopy allow to investigate the bitumen microstructure and SBS polymers dispersion. The results shown in the pictures clearly indicate that the SBS polymers are less degraded for recovered binders from warm mixtures, especially in the case of dense graded mixtures. This result could be due to the chemical additive used for the warm mix asphalt technology, uh, which could behave as a sacrificial agent against oxidation. Thus, the lower production and mixing temperature of warm mixtures preserved not only the bitumen from aging, but also the degradation of the polymers. The recovered polymer modified binders from both warm and hot mixtures were also subjected to frequency sweep tests to obtain the master cures. Looking at the pictures, it's clear that bitumens recovered from dense graded mixtures are stiffer than the ones recovered from open graded mixtures. This result is in agreement with the higher wrap content used for the production of the dense graded mixtures, equal to 25%, whereas for open graded mixtures, uh, wrap content was only 15%. Surprisingly, uh, when comparing hot and warm binders recovered from the same type of mixtures, we can see that binders recovered from warm, warm mixtures are stiffer than ones recovered from hot mixtures, especially at the lower and intermediate frequencies. This outcome could be interpreted as a consequence of less degraded SBS polymers. In binders recovered from warm mixtures, and this is in perfect agreement with the results of the confocal laser scanning microscopy and atomic force microscopy. The last part of this presentation is related to the environmental assessment of warm recycled asphalt mixtures. In particular, uh, we evaluated uh, the main differences during the production, production at the asphalt plant for warm recycled and hot recycled mixtures for three different types of asphalt mixtures, mixtures and considering two reference annual periods. In detail, we assumed three separated phases during the production at the asphalt plant. The drying heating phase of the aggregates, the heating phase of polymer modified bitumen at 170 degrees C, and the mixing phase with the different time and temperature for warm and hot mixtures. During the drying heating phase of the aggregates, different temperatures were assumed for the two reference periods. In particular, according to the data taken from the ASPA plant, which cooperated, cooperated with us at, uh, when we uh, did the this study, higher temperatures are adopted during the cold and the wet weather. Moreover, the higher the wrap content in the mixture, the higher the heating temperature of aggregates. Then the calculated parameters during the dry heating phase of the aggregates in terms of thermal energy, fuel consumption, and carbon dioxide emissions exhibit a reduction of about 15%. And these results are perfectly in agreement with the real data, data of the fuel consumption collected at the asphalt plant. Um, the calculated parameters for the heating of polymer modified, modified binders demonstrated that this uh, phase is not influential in the comparison between warm and hot recycled mixtures because the heating temperature is the same and for both, in both cases and equal to 170 degrees C. In the case of mixing phase, there is an increase in electricity consumption and CO2, CO2 emissions 
in the case of warm mixers because it was assumed longer mixer mixing time for a better wrap inclusion in the final mixture. In summary, uh, based on the calculated pa parameters listed in this table, the total CO2 emissions for all mixtures show a reduction of more than 14% with a peak of 16% reduction in the case of warm recycled open graded asphalt mixtures. Uh, these results are in good agreement with the other data available in the scientific literature. During the construction of the trial section considered in this case study, also airborne pollutants emissions were measured at the stack of the drying drum during the heating of the aggregate. The results show a strong reduction in nitrogen oxides in volatile organi organic compounds and in particle matters, whereas the sulfur oxides remain basically unchanged, and for the carbon oxide, an increase of 22% of emissions was found. First, uh, we have to say that sulfur oxide and carbon oxide emissions do not represent the most crucial and important env environmental issue. Moreover, the increase in carbon dioxide emissions can be solved with a better burner setting because when the temperature is lower, the, the asphalt plant must have a different setup to achieve optimal fuel combustion. So, in conclusion, uh, the huge amount of experimental data collected during the, the seven-year case study in terms of multi-approach analysis of mechanical performance and interface bonding, in situ non-destructive testing, monitoring of payment, bearing capacity evolution, chemical effects on polymer-modified vitamins, environmental assessment, demonstrated that warm recycled mixtures, both open-graded and dense-graded, are reliable and can lead to even improved performance compared to the corresponding hot recycled mixtures. In this sense, the seven-year uh, case study can be considered uh, paradigmatic because it shows the correct methodology to obtain a shared example useful for general generalization. Such a methodology should be followed in order to properly support every life cycle assessment related to the use of a new sustainable technology. Since I suppose you are all young scholars, I would like to conclude my presentation citing Karl Popper's book, Objective Knowledge, reading the last sentence in the slide that should inspire your future activities. Nobody is exempt from making mistakes. The great thing is to learn from them. Thank you for your attention. Uh, we'll have some time for some questions. Uh, Professor Okaji. Francisco, thank you so much for an excellent presentation. This is uh, a meeting that it's run by our students. So I just wanted to say hi and uh, thank you for being with us today. It's a pleasure and I look forward to seeing you in the spring. So thank you again. I'm gonna leave some time for our students to ask questions, but I have one quick note that I would like maybe when there is time to explain to us the experience that Italy has with OGFC because in Illinois, we reject using OGFC for several reasons, especially the winter maintenance. So it's good to give us an idea about your experience and then we'll go to your topic. Hmm. I can tell you that um, our motorway network in Italy um, uh, use um, is covered with about 80% of open graded friction courses. And we uh, obtained um, a very big uh, improvement in terms of safety, of course, because of the skid resistance under um, extreme uh, weather. You know, now the, the rains is very um, 
is much higher and is in a shorter time. So if you have porous asphalt layers as a surface curves, you can manage uh, the, uh, the control of your vehicle during driving. And um, also the visibility is uh, much better uh, due to the splash and spray reduction. And that's why we, we have uh, the conventional dense graded wearing courses only <laughs> where the temperature and the winter maintenance uh, uh, do not allow the use of open graded friction courses. But our experience is very good. Under very heavy traffic, we use it also. Recently, I'm running a, a very interesting experience with uh, even 25% of rap in open graded friction courses and adopting uh, the warm technology. And the results are really uh, promising. And usually the service life of this type of uh, friction course um, are, um, are able to, to, uh, to support the traffic loading uh, for up to 10 years. And we have a very high heavy traffic. So it means that the technology is good and mature now and uh, we started at the end of 80s with the porous asphalt uh, friction courses that's why we use of course fibers and uh, we um, adopt at the asphalt plant some uh, some uh, specific procedure that now uh, gives us the uh, this we are sure that the performance are good always sometimes if you have a bad weather and so, you know, when you start to lay down on the mixtures on the on the road and suddenly the weather conditions change so in this case you could have some early failure but it's it's uh, not that common even though it, um, we we make the the works during the night time due to the uh, to avoid the interruption of the traffic during the daytime. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, more questions to Professor Canestori. Uh, happy. Okay. I have one, Professor. Um, I'm curious to know how you track the polymer degradation. Can you explain to us a little bit more about which parameter were you using? I think it was from AFM in your slides. Yes, I can show you the, if you agree, I can show you the picture because what I asked um, my, my colleague, uh, very expert in the, in the chemical uh, field, to run the tests, of course. Uh, uh, and when I told him uh, the, the mixtures were produced uh, in the same asphalt plant and uh, in the same week, and with the same polymer modified bitumen, he was really surprised because in the, for example, in the hot uh, produced mixture, you cannot recognize very easily the polymer phase. Whereas in the warm uh, mixtures, the polymer, the polymer is, uh, is very well uh, detectable. If you want, I can share the, the screen and show you again the, the picture where it's very interesting. Let me go to the picture. Yes, here. If you see here, uh, the polymeric phase uh, inside the polymer modified binder is clearly evident. Whereas in the hot, corresponding hot mixture, you have a homogeneous phase without a, the possibility to recognize any polymerized phase. And it was much uh, evident in the case of the open graded asphalt because uh, the open graded asphalt um, suffer the effects of the climatic a a a agents, uh, solar radiation, uh, rain, uh, and every every climatic uh, agent. So the, 
if you look and uh, we published these results and we have also another picture uh, based on the i can show you i didn't insert the, this picture in the presentation because i suppose my presentation was too long yes this is Another picture that I didn't include in my presentation, uh, based on the digital microscopy light polarized, and again, uh, based on the observation uh, given by my colleague experts in uh, chemistry, uh, the, the conclusion was that uh, the, um, in the case of uh, warm uh, recycled mixtures, we have the possibility to reduce the degradation of the polymer. This is the main conclusion. If, if you want, I can share the paper that was accepted a couple of weeks ago because uh, we uh, submitted this paper on the Journal of Construction and Building Materials. Uh, here I have uh, a list of selected references. And the last one I'm referring to is, yes, this one, characterization of aged bitumen recovered from in-situ polymer modified hot mix asphalt and warm mix asphalt using advanced technology. And is really <laughs> recent the, the final acceptance of this of this paper. And wow. I, I include also the list of the references in the presentation. So if you want, you can contact me and we can discuss more in detail if you need more explanation. Uh, professor, just one very quick question as well about your uh, your data. Uh, when it comes to your field sections, the field sections with warm mix asphalt and hot mix asphalt, is there any uh, difference in terms of the field performance that you realized? Uh, in terms of, sorry, I... Uh, in terms of the field performance in stresses or IRI or whatever measure, uh, no, uh, we are yes. So, the motorways, um, motorway network in, in Italy uh, is monitored uh, in terms of roughness, IRI, and also uh, uh, following my suggestion, they also purchase the, the traffic speed reflectometer. So they run uh, the monitoring of all the motorway network twice a year. So in terms of uh, roughness, no problems. I can tell you that the performance of the warm mix section are even better than the reference one because always when we decide to to check the right the reliability of a new technology, we also uh, consider also the construction with uh, the conventional solution in order to have a reliable comparison between the new technology and the usual one because. Uh, yes, in the laboratory, we can detect uh, no, under very well-controlled conditions, differences. And um, But when you move to the real scale uh, field analysis, uh, I think that the, the last word uh, no, is always uh, uh, from the field uh, behavior and performance. Uh, thank, you. thank you so much, uh, Professor Canestrari, for the presentation. Uh, I remember reading your work along with Professor Bahia when I was doing my master's about uh, moisture damage and the adhesive and cohesive properties of asphalt aggregate mixes. And I think this is uh, relevant uh, when you when we start talking about warmest mix asphalt, because at least I would imagine that this is one of the areas that uh, the mix would suffer when it comes to the binder sticking to the aggreg aggregates at lower temperature, and especially when you put in some wrap in there to ensure the proper blending between the aged uh, bitumen and the uh, virgin binder. Uh, would, uh, would you think, or have you done any testing to verify that WMA at least performs adequately when it comes uh, to these, uh, let's say, parameters as a double normal HMA? Yes, thank you for this very good question. I have also, uh, um, uh, some data about this topic uh, related to the evaluation of different temperature uh, uh, effects on the bonding and adhesion because we uh, carried out in the laboratory also uh, BBS testing, uh, trying to simulate uh, the different uh, temperature 
in order to check if there are or not uh, problems in terms of addition. But uh, we didn't find any problem also from this point of view. But uh, there are some um, papers uh, listed in the references also related to, to this specific point. And again, if you want, we can exchange some <laughs> some comment together uh, if you need more details. Thank you so much. Uh, we tested also this this point from the because, uh, for example, we uh, run also we carried out also uh, tests on the um, on the binder phase, no, uh, evaluating uh, uh, the properties in from also the point of the tribological uh, point of view because. When you use um, chemical additive, uh, additives, the, the possibility to reduce the working temperature, the mixing and compaction temperature, uh, is not because the additive is a viscosity reducer, but because it works differently. And uh, maybe the, the reason uh, lies in the um, tribological uh, performances of the binder uh, with chemical additives, and this is what exactly what we found. We found because comparing the viscosity at the different temperature of the virgin binder and the virgin binder added with the chemical additives, uh, you don't have any uh, evident differences in terms of viscosity. So it means that it, it, it's not a matter of viscosity; it's a matter of something else. Um, so we have a, a huge amount of, of data because this is a really seven-year case study. So that's why uh, in my title I uh, in, included the, the term paradigmatic because I because this is very important. When we have new materials and immediately uh, someone proposes a LCA evaluation, I ask myself, how can you? evaluate the life cycle assessment without uh, any um, data about the real performance. You can run LCA only if you uh, uh, put a very big hypothesis uh, uh, related to the performance, because before you have to check if the performance uh, is good or not, or not, and especially when you compare different technologies. So. This is the reason why uh, I, uh, when I work with the um, uh, road agency, the motorway society, always if they ask me to check a new methodology, I tell them we have to look at the uh, trial section, we have to compare with the existing solutions, and then we can uh, get the final answers only after years, because otherwise <laughs> you can only suppose that uh, no, uh, the LCA evaluation is good or not. Thank you. Okay, uh, Professor Castanari, it's uh, it's almost 10 p.m. in Italy now, so uh, we thank you so much for your time, and thank you, thank you very much for being with us today. Uh, I'm really honored that I have to thank Imad for inviting me and hopefully uh, next uh, uh, spring I will be for uh, uh, one month as a visiting professor uh, in uh, Minnesota. Um, probably I could have also a possibility. This means, this means yeah. we're going to split it with Minnesota and you will be half of it in Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we will see, but for, yeah. uh, for sure... <laughs> Uh, Imad, you know that uh, we are organizing the exciting Winter School 2024, and we already discussed about this very interesting event in Italy. So yep. um, we will have time to discuss again about this. Absolutely. Uh, I think the spring is better for me, so definitely I will call you and we'll discuss it. Thank Absolutely. You. Yep. Thank you for inviting me. All right. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you. Thank you.